Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hank Cisco Show. Let's go. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann Zippy, and I'm producer, host of Chow Bell Living Italian Style, and proud to be filling in for Hank Sisko today on the Hank Sisko Show. And you know, Hank loves every nationality in the world, and we think Italian touches everybody. So I um, wanted to bring you some Italian news that's happened since we've last been together. And on October 23rd, um, following in Hank Sisko's tradition that he's done every year, we were at the foot of the Rizzo statue with radio host personality Dom Giordano. And Dom greeted the crowd. We had a nice group of people there to recognize October 23rd as Rizzo's 99th birthday. Um, Hank was one of the policemen and um, detectives that worked with Rizzo. And he also was a pallbearer at Rizzo's uh, funeral. So he was very close to him. We have a special shout out that day because uh, Captain Lou Cavalieri from the Chapel of the Four Chaplains at the Navy Yard, he joined us to say a few words about how Rizzo's development of the Philadelphia Navy Yard um, was very important during his time here. And we also had a visit from um, some other interesting Rizzo supporters. The Stan, who does this show as well, he stopped by too. In the meantime, the 99 bread that we have at the foot of the statue is courtesy of Kasha's Bakery in Frank's old na neighborhood at 17th and Rittner. So we want to take a shout out to Sam Kasha for bringing us, uh, for making two beautiful nice loaves of bread. Instead of cutting birthday cake, we gave everybody rolls. So it was a fun uh, afternoon. In the meantime, some news about space. You know, it's very interesting to see, of course, we were one of the, um, we were the first people on the moon, but um, there's a lot of things happening in space right now. I've been telling you about some of the um, astronauts that were around in the Italian, um, uh, from Italy, actually. And the recent Italian um, astronaut, Luca Parmentano, was recently appointed commander of the International Space Station this month. He's the first Italian and only the third European to hold this position. I really thought that was a, an interesting accomplishment because not too long ago, I told our listeners here that there was a DJ in space named um, Luca. He calls himself DJ Astra Luca. And he became the first person to perform a live DJ session from outer space. And he felt that music was the la universal language. So seems to be a lot of Italian Americans up in space at that international, I'm sorry, Italians in that international space station. We'll have to look into the nationality of the other ones that are on board. We wish them luck and safe travels home. Um, another survey that came out, which is really interesting, earlier this year, Bloomberg Global Health Index published the top 25 healthiest nations in the world. Now, the United States came in at 35. So we didn't make the top 35. It came, I mean, top 25. It came in at 35. But the second place winner of the healthiest country in the world out of 169 nations was Italy. So when you hear about that Mediterranean diet, you should perk your ears up because um, they have long life expectancies there and they have uh, a healthy cuisine. Another import to keep your eyes open when you're in the state stores this holiday season, there's the first Italian gin is being sold in the United States and it's called Malfi, M-A-L-F-Y. Malfi Gin, it's got a beautiful blue label. It's from Italy and it's the first gym, gin imported to the United States. So keep your eyes open for that, for that and give it a try if you're a gin lover out there for one of your holiday cocktails. 
Um, we hadn't been on since Columbus Day, so one of the other things we wanted to tell you about this Columbus Day, which we really would like to save that holiday for Italians and still respect Indigenous People Day. I think there's room for everybody, but we certainly don't want to forget our history and our culture. So when I was doing some research on this, um, one of the local Italian newspapers, the Italian Tribune, who's really based out in New York, came up with some really interesting statistics. The Italian stonemasons in Denver, Colorado, in 1907, was the first state to declare Columbus Day to be a holiday, October 12th. So it goes back to 1907 in Denver being the first state to adopt it. And in 1892, New Yorkers celebrated the first 40th anniversary of um, Columbus coming to America. And since, uh, let's see, what's the date that their parade started? Um, I believe October 12th. Uh, I'm not quite sure of the exact date that Columbus Day Parade started in New York, but I do know there's a picture here from 1964, so you caught me on that. I do know they've had them every year since 1964, but I think it might even go a little further back than that. So all those states out there that are asking to overturn Columbus Day holiday, I say no need to overturn it. Just at least give us the opportunity to share it together. Um, some other news that I really think is important, we've talked about the Hanna-Barbera people, um, both being Italian, creating all our cartoon characters, the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Well, recently, October was Fashion Week in Milan. And when I got to look at the article, you know, we all know Versace and we all know Valentino. But then the list goes on and on about designers from Italy that have made it here in the United States. You have Ferragamo, you have Fendi, you have Max Mira, um, Bottega Veneta, um, Valley, Prada, Armani. The list went on and on. And it just shows that even today, how much it's grown that Italy is influenced around the world because so many of us are walking around with designer handbags and designer clothes and all of that. So that's my little Italian recap for what's happening in and around the area and what to look for that's happening and coming to the United States. But now it's time to get into a really exciting guest. Um, it's that time of year again and I'm happy to introduce you to my special guest today and that's Santa Claus, and Santa Claus is with Echo Hill Farm in historic Chester County. Welcome to the Hank Sisko Show. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Santa, I, I'm so excited to have you here today and your um, beautiful time of year where we can all dress in red and we can all smile. You have some pretty interesting uh, history about Santa Claus around the world. That's true. The Santa Claus myths and folklore uh, go, go back long, long before Christian times, um, long before our, even our modern calendar began, uh, which of course is a Christian uh, uh, invention. Um, we can look as far back I can find references to my mythology in Norse mythology, the Vikings. Um, the Vikings had a reverence for uh, many, many gods in a pantheon, and one of them was very important to them, that, uh, named Odin. Some of you may have seen Odin depicted in, in recent Marvel movies, but he wasn't just known as the Allfather, he was also known as the Gift Bringer. And Odin had a few helpers, the black ravens that would sit up on top of rooftops and listen in at the chimneys. And then they would fly back to Asgard and tell Odin about the behavior of the mortals. And if the mortals were good, he would fly overhead in an eight-legged eight -legged flying steed and drop gifts down the chimneys. Now, they didn't have chimneys the way we have chimneys today. Okay. They, had, they had fire pits in, their, in the center of their homes and a hole in their, in their ceiling where the smoke would go out the hole. 
So making it a little, lot easier to drop gifts down those than drop down modern chimneys. I bet it is. <laughs> well, you know, there's. Um, what about the Kris Kringle comment? Some people call you Kris Kringle. How does that enter into the picture? There are so many different names that that uh, the one sitting here gets called. Okay. And Kris Kringle um, is actually relatively new. Uh, and it dates back to uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch, as a matter of fact. Well, they're in uh, our backyard. Right in our backyard. It's, it's a, a Pennsylvania Dutch word that, that um, it, in their language, sounds more like kishkinkle. Uh, and okay. it, means, it means Christmas sock. Really? Christmas okay. sock. Um, and that goes back to referencing the story of, of St. Nicholas uh, and the first miracle that St. Nicholas is, is attributed to. Um, St. Nicholas was a bishop uh, in, in the fourth century, and he had come from a very wealthy family. His family was very upset with him for going into the priesthood, in fact, because he was giving up all the, all the wealth that he had inherited. So St. Nicholas was a Catholic He was a Catholic bishop. priest, a Catholic priest in a bishop in, in the fourth century. Okay. And there was a very poor man in, in, his, uh, in his area that had two daughters. And he didn't have enough money to give them a dowry. And at that point um, in history, if a, if a woman didn't have a dowry, she could not get a husband. And there weren't a lot of career opportunities for women without husbands back then. I would think not. And so to save um, those two women from that type of, of life, uh, Nicholas went to a, a window and dropped a few sacks of gold in through the window. And guess where they landed? inside their dirty socks. Why were there socks at the window, you think? Weren't, don't, don't you wash your, your socks in the laundry and the okay. washing machine and dryer? Well, that might be the way we do it today, but back then they'd do it by hand and hang them out on the window to dry. Hence the Christmas stockings the Christmas at the fireplace. The Christmas stockings there, thus the kishkinkle, the Christmas socks. That is amazing. So we've got in Europe, we've got Nordics, we've got in the Pennsylvania Dutch. You had mentioned something before we got on the air about the British Isles having <laughs> a Santa Claus. So that's a very fun part of, of Christmas history. Uh, everyone's heard of, uh, heard of Father Christmas. Well, we have Father Christmas thanks to the Romans who first uh, invaded the British Isles. And with them, they brought their, their worship uh, of multiple gods, much like the Nordics did. But the, they had one god in particular that they truly liked to, uh, to party with, and that was the god Bacchus. He was the god of revelry and, and, and wine. And Father Christmas was essentially a personification of Bacchus. Uh, and the midwinter celebration was essentially a pub crawl. And they would go from pub to pub singing songs until the bartender would give them enough booze so that they would go to the next pub. Well, that sounds as similar to a bar crawl today. It also is the origin of, of our Christmas caroling. Okay. And, and if you hear, ever heard the song, you know, here we come a wassailing. Well, wassail was an alcoholic beverage. And one of those song songs, you know, you, you've heard the, the, the lyric, we won't go until we get some, we won't go until we get some. Right. That's because they wouldn't actually leave the bar until the bartender served them, and then they would go away. That became, you the, are that was the tales, Christmas Santa. celebration of the time. Now, along came some, some uh, reformations. Uh, and the uh, Church of England said, you know what, this, this is too pagan, uh, we're going to ban Christmas. So in the mid-1600s, Christmas was completely banned by British Parliament. You were not permitted by law to, to celebrate Christmas. Uh, for 15 years, wow. you could not celebrate Christmas during the time of Oliver Cromwell who was on a lot of people's naughty list. Okay. Um, and when he ended his life uh, a, a, about a foot shorter than he started with, um, they reinstituted Christmas. And Father Christmas, instead of being the, the uh, personification of revelry and, uh, and frolicking, he became more of uh, like a herald announcing the birth of Christ. And that was much more palatable in the eyes of the church officials. And also because of the change in the uh, regency at the time, uh, the Father Christmas figure also kind of became the figure of a, a trusted regent for the baby New Year. 
So we have some of those those modern traditions today in some of the. Some it's of the amazing pictures. how it could dates back pre um, anthropology. It, it, it's and and all goes oral tradition stories that, that get passed down all the way to today. You know. You bring something interesting up because, of course, Santa Claus is 365 days a year. You're always mm. around <laughs> and always watching those naughty and nice lists. Um, you've taken Santa uh, Claus and the words and have really um, put some meaning to that. I'd like you to share with our sure. viewers. So unlike you might see today uh, where... The image of Santa Claus often gets used to, to sell wares, m whether it be a soda pop or candy or, of course, or used you're cars. Of course, you're all uh, over. But the, uh, the actual meaning that those stories that went back time immemorial uh, had was nothing commercial at all. Uh, and I've created an acronym to help people remember what the meaning of Santa Claus ought to be. And what should you your so meaning be? So I say be, Santa, Santa Claus means standing as neighbor to all, cultivating light and uplifting spirits. Santa Claus. And that's all year long. That's all year long. You don't need a white beard or a red coat. Uh, to, to be a to good neighbor. To, that's exactly right. Standing as neighbor to all. S-A-N-T-A. -A. And then there's a little bit of Santa Claus in all of us with that's that right. philosophy. That's right. Yeah. So now you also are associated with Echo Hill Farm. Yes. And um, we're going to have the North Pole experience coming up at Echo Hill Farm out in Thornton, yeah, Chester County. Yeah, and that's, that's going to start uh, Saturdays and Sundays in November, starting on the 22nd. Uh, the, f the farm will be open uh, from 10 a.m. to 5. There'll be great opportunities for, for craft workshops for, for, the, for the kids. There'll be uh, the barn tours, and the barn shop has some really neat uh, things that... that uh, are there for sale, uh, some specialty gifts, handmade gifts like soaps and, and, uh, and organic honeys and, and holiday wreaths and things like that. And you're going to be hanging your hat there. And I'll be there from 12 to 2 and we'll have some of the contemporary uh, you know, um, photo opportunities and a chance to take some selfies with Santa and we'll have a photographer there doing, doing photo packages for the families that, that, that want that. Well, you know we also have another opportunity there that's that? really neat. Um, some people may ha are, be familiar with the Griswold's uh, Christmas Vacation. Oh, that Griswold station wagon, <laughs> Chevy That Chase. station will be, will be parked at, uh, at um, or at least a replica of that, of that station wagon, will be parked at the farm, and people can get into it themselves and, and, and have pictures taken and a lot of fun that way. Well, too. it sounds like this North Pole experience is uh, in your backyard. You've also created something about the words North yeah, Pole. Yeah, so the to North share. Pole. Everybody knows that, or at least modern modern uh, legends have it that Santa lives at the North Pole, and it doesn't necessarily mean a physical place. But I want to tell people an easy way to remember how to stay on the nice list mm -hmm. or to get off the naughty list, and it's an acronym that I put together for North Pole. And that's so Santa sounds like he likes to write. Oh, Santa's a wordsmith. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but North Pole, it tells you what to do. Nurture others, respect truth, honor people, and offer love everywhere. North Pole. And that's, e that's easy. You can be at the North Pole all year round. And any place. Any place. Any place. Wherever Nurturing you go, others. you can be Santa at the North Pole. Respecting truth, honor people, all for love everywhere. Yeah. That is great. Well, that experience that we're going to have over at Echo Hill Farm, um, one of the things that we're going to be doing there is um, there's this local artist, Brigida Di Genova, mm -hmm. and she's from Italy. And she's going to feature actually beautiful, one-of-a-kind handcrafted Santa Clauses as one of the uh, array Lovely. of gift items. So you're going to love her things. Maybe you can autograph one of the, in, <laughs> the, in addition to having her autograph yours. That's, that's a wonderful thing. And I'll tell you, um, where I spend most of my time throughout the year, um, I have boxes of little Santa Claus figurines uh, that look in different, different ways. Some have the kind of traditional Father Christmas look that I have today. Some are more uh, of the uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas appearance, you know, the, jo the jolly old elf with, right. the with the belly that 
wobbles like a bowl full of jelly. Um, and then I've had you on the ladder helping out at yeah, Echo Hill Farm. Yeah, looking at, dressed in my in my uh, my work clothes. Getting uh, ready to put the, yep. getting ready to put the the village together. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. And and all all over the world, the uh, the the iconography of Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas or uh, to the Dutch it's Sinterklaas. Uh, they they have subtly different appearances, and it wasn't always in red with the fur trim. No. Um, it, when in the early days when um, people were really revering St. Nicholas, uh, th they would celebrate St. Nicholas Day by dressing up as a Catholic bishop uh, with complete with the conical hat. And he had the red uh, robe. No, the no, actually didn't have no. A red robe what then? happened was the Calvinist Reformation came around and they told the people that's too, too much like the papacy. You can't celebrate in that way. Okay, so, so here again, another culture saying we can't celebrate. But it was so important, what, what that represented was right. so important to the people that they morphed it and they changed the way they celebrated. So instead of dressing as a, as a, a bishop with the pointy hat, yes. they dressed in red robes and, and a floppy hat instead, which was essentially their bedclothes. Okay. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd wear your, your, your nightcap. That was what that was. And um, so that when the offi officials came around and said, hey, you can't celebrate. Oh, you're not celebrating that way, are you? you know, so th it let them actually continue to celebrate and revere St. Nicholas in a way that the, the new Calvinist reforms were not letting them do but they kept it up anyway. Santa, it sounds like there's a little bit of a book in you. I'm actually writing a book right now uh, about that very, t very topic. Because um, so many people, when they hear all the stories of Santa about Santa Claus, uh, they, they don't know what to believe. They don't even know if to believe. But there's actually some history to it. And, it, and so the book that I'm writing, the working title, is Santa Claus from Reality to Myth and Back Again. Because where we've gotten now is a point in our own history where once again, what I think the people want is something different than what they're actually being presented with right now, this hyper-commercial view of, of Santa Claus. And what we need is to once again continue in the tradition of what it was intended and morph it back into the true meaning, which is why I came up with those two acronyms. Which is just wonderful to do. actually. I have to give a shout out to somebody very special, Santa, and he's special to you too. Would that be Hank Sisko? Well, Hank Sisko <laughs> always gets a special shout out, and we're, we're going to make show. absolutely, <laughs> and and you're going to make sure you pass his chimney uh, all the time. Um, and so we do want to wish him well. Wait, did you say well. to pass his chimney or, or uh, stop at his chimney? Stop at yeah, his chimney. Yeah, stop at his chimney. <laughs> but in the meantime, there's another person that I we have to thank, and that's Rick. Schiffer. Good friend, yes. Rich has been a real good friend to you, and he introduced me to you. Can you tell me a little bit about Rich? Uh, Rich uh, and I go way back. Um, he lives in Ridley Park, and he's a, he's a member at, uh, at Swarthmore F uh, Friends Meeting as a Quaker. Um, and he actually helped me come up with those acronyms. Rich is a, is a bit of a wordsmith also, and we love to have play word games back and forth all the time. Well, I, you have to reach out to the people at Swarthmore Friends Meeting and, and thank uh, them for introducing you to uh, I certainly us. will. And that's a really great, exciting opportunity because from that, we could get into the fun things to do uh, and enjoy your family upcoming at Echo Hill Farm. That's Let's right. talk a little bit about the fun part. Yeah. We've talked about history. We've talked about um, what so you stand for. But I can tell that, that the, the moms and dads out there are going to have a lot of fun um, looking at some of the wonderful things in, in the barn shop. The dads might especially like the, the miniature car collection, some beautiful, wonderful antique cars uh, that are... I think there's over 200 antique classic that miniatures for sounds, sale. That sounds right to me. Yeah. Um, that's, and hopefully, um, um, 
a lot of those will get sold so that uh, the money that's, that gets raised will help save the barn there there at Echo Hill. Well, you know, Santa, that's really some history there behind mm -hmm. that barn. So when the families visit, they'll actually be on a pre-revolutionary war yes. um, ground. Yeah, the, the, the house there was probably uh, the original part of the house, which is well, still the barn. standing. Right. But the, ha the original house was, I think, probably... Uh, late 1650s to 1680s. Okay. There's some wonderful, wonderful uh, architectural features of that uh, that came from that era. And then the barn itself was, was later uh, in two later. separate stages. S right. The but when we say later, we're not talking the 1900s. Mm. We're still talking the mid-1800s. Yes. Um, and a lot of history is there. And some historian friends of mine are looking into it to see how it may have tied in, uh, like many others in that area, especially around areas like Cheney, that were tied in with the Underground Railroad. Yes. So there's some uh, interesting features as you walk around the property that you'll be able to see how this part of the property was completely hidden off from the road, and they could be loading or unloading a, a wagon full of, of escaped uh, in, in, you know, freedom seekers that were uh, not able to be seen by people hunting for them on the road. Which is exciting it's, to it, hear. It's interesting to see. Yeah. To, to walk around history. Yeah. It really is exciting to walk around history. The other thing um, that we're going to be doing there is um, having some interesting food vendors and... Mm -hmm. And s'mores. S'mores uh, at the fire pit. You promised me there's going to be s'mores in mm -hmm. a fireplace. Yes. Yeah, I got your fire pit all ready. We have s'mores packages for our visitors. Wonderful. Kids crafts. Wonderful. I think we're going to have a really nice holiday season for grandparents bringing their grandchildren mm -hmm. or or whoever wants to come out for a little bit of an afternoon fun. Now, one thing that, that, that uh, I think people should know about this particular farm, uh, this is not the kind of farm that currently has any animals on it. Okay. So any any anyone that's uh, you know, afraid of farm animals or things like that, this you can you can feel free to come out to this farm, and um, you can even uh, I think y you were talking to me about having uh, having a day where families could bring their pets for for pictures with Santa Claus too. Yes, they could actually check the Echo Hill Farm Facebook page, and on that Facebook page will be a listing of the activities and the times and the special days mm -hmm. because pet pictures are everybody loves their pets. And, and Santa loves loves animals too. Um, there's quite a few that that live near me, and I I know the pets better than I know their owners, to be quite honest. <laughs> well, this is a busy time of year coming uh, up for you, and one of the things that it seems that as well that you do is go out to the people themselves. Yes. Yep. So some people, uh, you know, they have a special gathering of, of family and friends, uh, or office mates, or th you know, coworkers. Uh, I'm happy to pay them a visit, um, and you have my contact information, so they could contact you to. Well, to you're always that available out. through Echo Hill Farm. That's right. Absolutely, and they could take it, email us, uh, at, at, or check our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, and when you talk about that, are you willing to do daytimes over at some of these offices for their lunch Christmas Daytime, parties? People, people, uh, people are where people are at all times of the, of the day. Okay. And Santa has a way of getting around. For, uh, uh, I don't want to say I'll be at this place and this place at the, uh, at the same time. I, don't I think only do that one day of the year. Okay. <laughs> You're allowed that magic one day a year. You know, um, but yes, uh, so daytimes, week, weekdays, stuff like that. Since I'll be uh, appearing at Echo Hill Farm on the, on the, on, on the weekends, uh, my, weeks, my weekdays are, are open to some extent. Uh, but Good. But I, I, I'll make sure you have a full schedule of, of when my availability. Okay, so when people contact us, maybe they could sh you could show up at their That's Christmas right. party or holiday event right. or office party. And I think, um, uh, I think we're, we're planning a, a, a breakfast too, aren't we? There's a couple sun Saturdays. We're going to do Saturday breakfast with Wonderful. Santa's, a couple Saturdays. And on Fridays, I think you got to meet her last yes. time you were at the farm. Mary Ward from That's Keep right. It Greenery. Mary, she, she makes some beautiful, beautiful centerpieces. And not only does she make these beautiful centerpieces, but she's great at teaching people how to do it also. Uh, and that's what you're going to be hosting on Friday nights. Is, is Friday afternoons is special and special workshops with 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 her to learn how to make those 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 
natural crafts uh, yourself. And they could go home with centerpieces for their right. table and it'll be fun. I think the holiday season is looking good. How about some advice on how to tell those kids to get off or adults to get <laughs> off the naughty list and onto the nice list. The, we still the, have time. The, the key is that North Pole that you can... Was that North Pole mean again, the, So North Pole is nurture others, respect truth, honor people, offer love everywhere. That's North Pole. And, and if you can do that, yes. you'll be able to stay off the naughty list. And on to the And nice. if you're on the naughty list, you'll be able to get on to the nice list. Well, we're going to end with that because I'm getting a real big wrap up, Santa. <laughs> and there could be no other way to tell them how to get on that nice list than nurture others, respect truth, honor people, and offer love everywhere. And if you could do that this holiday season, then it goes back to simply, if you can't remember all that, just remember, love thy neighbor. And that'll take care of it all. So until we meet again, shout out to Hank Cisco. Happy holidays and safe happy holiday season. And thank you for joining us on the Hank Cisco Show. I'm Barbara Ann Zippy. And ciao, Bella. And I'm Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho.